Section 4.2 of James Stewart's calculus book has to do with the mean value theorem. There are several other theorems in this, this uh, several page section, but the main point is the mean value theorem. And of course the idea of, of mean here is not that it's a really hard theorem, but that um, we're talking about the average value theorem. What's the basic idea of this? Well, the basic idea is, is that if you take a certain interval of a function, then somewhere on that interval, the instantaneous rate of change is going to be equal to the average rate of change. What is this saying? Well, if you, if you have a graph of a function uh, on a particular interval, um, at some point on that function, on that interval, the slope of the tangent to the function at some point is going to be equal to the average value over that stretch. So if you were to draw a line from point A where the interval begins and to point B where the interval ends, if you were to draw a straight line that would give you the average uh, value over that stretch of the function. What the mean value theorem is saying is is that that secant line, that line from A to B at the beginning and end of that interval at some point on that interval, at least one place, the tangent to that function is going to be parallel uh, to that um, secant line. So at at least one point on a particular interview, interval, the instant rate of change is going to be equal to the average rate of change. I put continuous and differentiable, differentiable in there. Those are kind of like the legal, um, it has, those have to be satisfied. There are some exceptions. So, the person who came up with this was uh, jo Joseph uh, Lagrange in the 1700s, a mathematician. Um, okay, let's talk about the mean value theorem in more technical terms. So, let's get out the, the math legalese. So, let's assume that f of x of this particular function is continuous on the interval uh, from a to b, including the endpoints, which is what the brackets means. We also need to assume that it's differentiable, uh, differ differentiable on that interval, uh, not necessarily including uh, the endpoints. If that's the case, then the mean value theorem says there is a number c somewhere on that interval a, b, such that the derivative of the function at c is equal to, basically the other side is the slope of the line going from A to B. So the slope is the rise over the run. So the rise is the difference in the Y values. So F of B minus F of A divided by the, the difference of the X values, B minus A. So basically F of B minus F of A over B minus A is another way of, of saying the slope of the secant line that goes from A at the beginning of the interval to B at the end of the interval. And so basically, again, what is the mean value theorem? It's saying that at if um, we have a continuous interval that's differentiable, uh, then there's going to be some point on that function where the, the tangent to the function is going to be parallel uh, to the, um, the line that goes from A to B. And again, the diagrams in the book uh, on page 216 uh, illustrate this visually. Okay. Um, there's another way to represent this that simply shuffles the terms around uh, algebraically that, that can be useful. Um, it's not as easy to remember uh, because the f of c equals f of b minus f of a over b minus a. That's, it's easy to remember because that's simply saying that at some point c, the slope of the function is going to be equal to the slope of the uh, secant line from the beginning to the end of the interval. That's easy to remember. Um, and so I would prefer to memorize that uh, because it's easy to remember, um, and then when I when you need to, uh, simply multiply both sides by b minus a to get the bottom uh, version of it. it. Says the same thing, just in a slightly different form. Well, so that's the main point. The main point of this section. However, um, there are some other little uh, nuggets uh, in this uh, section. So, in order to prove the mean value theorem, uh, Stewart begins the chapter with Rolle's uh, theorem. And so Roll was a uh, another French mathematician um, who lived uh, from 1652 to 1719. Um, and here's what he came up with. 
Um, and this again, this is common sense. Uh, if you want the proof, Stuart proves these things. Um, but if, if you have a, a function that's continuous on the closed interval A to B, including the endpoints, and it's differentiable, this is the same thing we just saw uh, with the mean value theorem, it's differentiable on that open interval from A to B, not including the endpoints. Um, and now here's the, here's the next point. If f of A equals uh, f of B, meaning that um, at some point, at the, at the beginning of the interval, you're at the same level as the end of the interval. So think of, for example, um, a graph that's a, a bit of a hump. f of A is at the same y level as f of b. Um, so uh, basically what we're saying here is that that you, ha you have a, a beginning point and an end point that are at the same level and in between you know the function does whatever it does. Um, but what Roll said is that if, if this is the case then there has to be a number somewhere in there where the slope is zero. Why? Because there had to be some point where it turned back around. Um, so if you have, uh, if it goes from f of a to f of b and, and it goes up and then comes back down or goes down and then comes back up, somewhere in there it has to, to level out to turn around. And that's going to be a place where the tangent is going to be horizontal. The tangent is going to be, uh, to be zero at some point. Again, this is common sense. In other words, it has to turn around at some point in order to get back to the same place. If f of a equals f of b, then there has to be some point uh, where, where it turns back around uh, to get back to where it was. Um, again, common sense, but uh, there's a nice mathematical proof in Stewart's textbook. A couple other little theorems that flow. If, if Rolle's theorem can be used to prove the mean, mean value theorem, uh, then there are a couple theorems that are consequences of the mean value theorem. So for example, uh, if the the, de the derivative of a function f equals zero for all the x's on an interval from a to b, then f must be a constant on a to b. Again, he proves it um, mathematically, but it makes perfect sense, doesn't it? If it basically this is saying that if the slope is zero, if the slope is horizontal for the entire stretch from a to b, then you're you're basically looking at a horizontal line. You're looking at a straight line across. And so that means that f is a constant, like y equals 3 or something like that. Um, so again, this makes perfect sense. It's common sense, but it can be proved using the mean value theorem. Uh, here's another one. Uh, if the uh, derivative of a function f uh, equals the derivative of a function g uh, for all x on a particular interval, then f minus g is a constant. Again, if you know what this is saying, it's all very commonsensical. If, by saying that the slope of the, of the derivative function f uh, and the slope of the derivative of function g, when you say that their slopes are the same, you're basically saying that you have two functions that are moving basically parallel to each other entirely uh, because they have the same slope at every point. And so if they have the same slope for every point on an interval, then you know that the difference between them stays the same. If, it go, if f goes up, g goes up. If f goes down, g goes down. And so the, the difference between f and g is always going to be a number, a constant. Um, again, perfect common sense, uh, but he uses the mean value theorem and uh, the theorem on the top of this page um, in order to, to demonstrate this. Or, of course, another way to put it is that uh, f of x is going to equal g of x plus some constant. Um, it's another way of saying the same thing. So there you have it, a number of variations uh, that are all in some way related uh, to um, the mean value theorem or Rolle's theorem, which is the basis for it.